Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hey, I'm Stephanie. It's our health unit for the month of November, and today we're going to be talking about something called appearance anxiety. Feeling kind of concerned about what you look like,、uh, wondering if you look good enough, or if you look bad, if your zits are too big, or if you've got hairs growing out of your nose, or whatever. You are very concerned about your appearance, or how you appear or seem to other people. And we want to free yourself, or you want to free yourself from beauty standards. So you shouldn't be too concerned about what other people look like. What's inside is what counts. So if you free yourself from something, you're no longer、uh, worried about it. You don't attach any significance to it. So don't be so worried about beauty standards. We're going to tell you during the lesson how those have changed throughout history. But first, guys, we're going to listen to today's article read once. Have you ever stood in front of the mirror wishing your nose were straighter, your face more symmetrical, or your thighs slimmer? In modern society, dissatisfaction with appearance is widespread. However, a look back at history reveals that the concept of beauty has constantly evolved with different cultures and eras. In the 1600s in England, pale skin was a symbol of class and wealth. A tanned face implied that a person spent time laboring outdoors, whereas pale skin indicated a leisurely lifestyle. Wealthy women would even use a white makeup product called lead powder to achieve a ghostly pale appearance, emphasizing their high status. In ancient Egypt, both men and women, due to the hot climate and religious beliefs, commonly shaved their heads or cut their hair short. And wore wigs for hygiene and aesthetics. Moreover, Egyptians of all social classes applied kohl, a cosmetic similar to modern dark eyeliner, around their eyes and extended it to their temples to create a striking look. During Japan's Heian period, people believed that beauty involved shaving or plucking their eyebrows and drawing long oval-shaped ones higher on the forehead. They thought that the larger the space between the eyes and eyebrows, the more good fortune it would bring them. Additionally, they blackened their teeth to conceal imperfections and prevent bad breath and tooth decay. Over the years, the standards of beauty have undergone significant transformations. Features considered attractive in ancient times often don't align with today's ideals. What was once seen as beautiful now tends to seem strange. Okay, everybody. It's time for us to discuss the contents of our lesson for today. Again, we're talking about appearance anxiety, and lots of people are concerned about how they look. And here we begin in the first paragraph. It's a question: Have you ever stood in front of the mirror wishing your nose were straighter, your face more symmetrical, or your thighs slimmer? I suppose some of us have. We do look in the mirror. Quite often, I actually don't look in the mirror、uh, often enough because、uh, sometimes I cut myself shaving, and then I don't look in the mirror afterwards. And then later in the day, somebody says, "Oh, there's blood on your face. You must have cut yourself shaving." Oh, gee, I did not look in the mirror after I shaved. I feel like a fool. But of course, most people look in the mirror because they're checking themselves out. Do I look good enough? Is my nose too big? Is it、uh, straight enough? Or is my face not symmetrical? My left eye is bigger than my right eye, or my nose kind of bends over to the side.、Uh, symmetrical here just means even. Okay, it's even from left to right. Nothing's bigger than the other one. Although I think, according to science,、uh, all of us have uh, uh, things that are bigger than the other thing. We just can't really notice it sometimes. Yeah, we don't really see it.、Um, people who have the most symmetrical faces are supposed to be considered the most beautiful or handsome on this earth. Uh, again, symmetrical just means you have something that is、uh, split down the middle. So you have two halves of something, and they look very much the same on both sides, except one side is a mirror image of the other. But as Tom said, I don't think anyone is exactly the same on both sides. So it's kind of fun to think about symmetrical.、Um, yeah, but.、Uh, I think most, at least, I'm speaking for the women out there. Most of us have looked in the mirror and thought, "Oh, I wish this were different and this were different."、Um, I did more of it when I was a teenager, less of it now. 
you get older and you're like, there's nothing I can do. So I'm not going to worry about it so much. Uh, guys, at least when I was growing up, guys never looked in the mirror. Uh, maybe when they were out of the shower and they're combing their hair mm. or when they started to shave, you have to look in the mirror, of course, or you're going to cut your face all over. But uh, it would it would be better if we did less of this. Uh, Unfortunately, most people have smartphones and selfies are still popular. So people spend a lot of time taking their own photograph and trying to fix it so they look beautiful. Um, I have nieces in my family who are constantly posting these perfect photos of themselves. But when I see them in real life, they don't look like the picture. So, yeah, we need to do less of that. In modern society or today, dissatisfaction with appearance is widespread. There are a lot of people who are unhappy with how they look. And that, of course, is in uh, light of the fact that they're comparing themselves to other people online. Of course, we've got social media with Facebook and Instagram. People posting wonderful photos of themselves all the time, making the rest of us feel like we don't match up. And moving on here, it says, however, a look back at history reveals that the concept of beauty has constantly evolved with different cultures and eras. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples of beauty in the past. We're going to go to England. We're going to go to Egypt. And we'll talk about some other places as well. And this is uh, going to serve as an example of how people viewed beauty in the past and to also illustrate the fact that uh, it was probably pretty important back then Uh, what you look like, although nowadays it's probably even more uh, dangerous for people or more um, anxiety-provoking because uh, it's so obvious with social media. Yeah, social media in a lot of ways has ruined our lives. Um, In some ways it's made it better, but in so many ways it's made it worse. So we're going to talk about that. One of our vocabulary words, guys, you can see there in the first paragraph at the end, it's era. It can also be pronounced era, era, era. Uh, Both Tom and I say era, so you can pick the one you want. Moving on, in the 1600s, in England, this is back long ago, pale skin, very white skin. They love that. They honestly don't have much sun in England, Mm. so it's not hard to have pale skin in England. Uh, That was a symbol of class and wealth. Why? Because... The people who were lower class were out in the fields working on farms. Uh, And those who had a lot of money didn't have to leave their home. They would just go to parties all the time, Mm. and they didn't have to work hard. So a tanned face implied or suggested that a person spent time laboring outdoors. Oh, they spend too much time outdoors. Uh... They must have no money. Their their skin is all tanned. You're a peasant. You're a farmer. You're not as good as we are because we're rich and our skin is nice and pale, nice and white. So pale skin indicated or uh, made people think you lived a very leisurely lifestyle. Le- leisurely just means you have a lot of free time. You can do what you want. You're not uh, killing yourself every day, working at the office 16, 18 hours a day. Leisurely is just things that you do in your free time, but you also do it in a relaxed way. You're not in a hurry, and you don't have a lot of stress. Exactly. Okay, so I think that's kind of the case nowadays. Uh, At least I think so here in Taiwan because the whitening products were so popular in the past. I don't uh, think they're so popular anymore. Oh, no, they still are, Tom. Oh, they still are. Okay, it seems (laughs) like I haven't really seen a lot of uh, commercials for whitening products. Every lotion that is sold in Taiwan has a may buy ingredient to it. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. But of course, uh, uh, there's no shame in being tanned. Of course, that means you're working outside, you're actually growing food for everybody, and you're working construction and building the houses that we need. And in the U.S., you want to have a tan because that proves you have a lot of leisure time. You're outside playing. Well, going to a beach and getting a suntan. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's just the opposite in America. We don't like pale skin. We like tan skin. Uh, exactly. I, I got the pretty pale skin myself, but I don't like to get suntans because I'm afraid of the dreaded skin cancer, Ooh. melanoma. But in any case, yes, if you had pale skin, well, you had a leisurely, comfortable lifestyle, and wealthy women would even use a white makeup product called lead powder to achieve a ghostly pale appearance 
emphasizing their high status.、Uh, when it says here, or when it describes a ghostly, pale appearance, I'm thinking back to some of the portraits that came out of this era in England. And yes, indeed,、uh, like、uh, queens or whatever were awfully white; they looked like ghosts. So that's why we're we're calling it a ghostly, pale appearance. And in Western countries, we consider ghosts to be white. Notice the the ingredient in this white powder was very deadly. It was lead. They were actually putting a deadly substance on their skin, which they didn't understand for a very long time.、Mm. Once they did, they stopped. But、uh, yeah, it led to a lot of early deaths among women back then. The guys wouldn't do it so much, but the women would.、Uh, it it really would emphasize their high status, though. If they had enough money to even buy this lead powder, your status is your standing in society. You could be in a lower class, a middle class, a high class. That's、uh, what that that means. There, your status. What's your status in life? And this word is also pronounced status. That kind of depends on who you're talking to, but I would say that status is more common in America. In Britain, it's status. Okay,、more. very good. That's a good point. So since we're Americans, we're going to say status here. And what we're also going to do is、uh, take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天带大家来看看自己漂不漂亮啊？不是啦，我们呢是要来看一下自己怎么定义美丽这件事。也不是啦，其实我们是要希望大家不要太注重外表，要拥抱自己。那我们要谈什么呢？就是谈很多人现在都有的那个容貌焦虑，有没有？但是要进入容貌容貌焦虑之前呢、啊？我们可能要先看一下，到底美是什么东西？也就是说，美的定义到底如何？其实，美没有固定定义耶，因为它的定义就是随着各地、还有文化、还有时代都不断的在变化。我们提到的这个概念呢，其实出现在文章第一段最后一句第三句这个地方。第三句的中间后面呢，其实我们回顾历史会历史啊，会发现这个 beauty 的 concept 这个概念。其实一直随着不同的文化，还有不同的时代，我们特别注意两个字。第一，在这句话当中的动词用的是 evolve。当然，我们看到它用一个现在完成时，因为一直是不断的在演变。可是这个演变的改变呢、啊，如果用 change 就不是很好，因为 change 只单纯强调变化了。那这里的 evolve 为什么会翻成所谓的演变？是因为它会有一个脉络，有一个原因存在的。而所谓的时代啊，时间呐、啊，最后面这句当中的 era 可以把它特别的抓出来，因为 era 通常指的是一个比较长的时间。那在这个长的时间当中，可能会有一些代表性的人或代表性的事情出来，比如说某个人执政的时候啦，或者是呃大战发生的那些时期，通常会搭配 era 这个名词。好，那接下来我们到第二段就开始先来回顾，比如说。十七世纪的英国，当时对于美的定义就是要很注重皮肤是苍白的。这出现在第二段第一句，这个形容词的 pale 可以抓出来。我们看到 pale skin 都会想说，这个人可能是生病了，对不对？尤其是比如说英国那边的白人，然后皮肤又很苍白，吓死人了，是怎样是生病吗？哎，那因为现在呢，就算是西方人也会觉得皮肤要晒得又黑才健康啊。可是当时不那么想，在。同样，第二段第二句这个地方，第二句就告诉我们，因为当时的概念是这样：当时呢，如果皮肤被晒成褐色啊 ，a tanned face，t a n n e d， 哦，就是晒成褐色，那就表示这个人一直要出门劳动啊，是劳工阶级的；而苍白的皮肤呢，就表示这个人都不用出门哦，哈、哦，有人伺候哦，生活很悠闲。当然，这一句话除了解释为什么苍白皮肤。表示财富跟阶级的象征，我们同样也要把逗点之后的 whereas 抓出来。这个 whereas 在英文当中就是连接词，而且它就表示逗点前后的子句文意对比对照，所以我们通常直接翻成然而如何如何。那这里的然而啊，你可能会想到 while 是也有这个功能，对不对？没错，逗点之后的 whereas 可以换成 while w h i l e 也有表示。句子前后对比对照的意思。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, guys. It's our health unit, and we're talking about、uh, kind of freeing yourself from having to worry about how beautiful you are,、uh, how you compare with others, and just kind of enjoy your life. Focus on your inner person instead of the outer shell that all of us worry about too much,、um, and how that can that all that worrying can lead to more stress in your life and anxiety. We're going to talk about that more in day two, but.、Uh, Right now, we're going back in history, and we're kind of looking at what people used to think of as beautiful back then. When we left you, we were talking about、uh, the 1600s in England. A pale skin was considered to be a social status symbol.、Uh, if you had pale skin, you weren't outside working on the farm. You weren't a laborer, or as Tom said, a peasant, someone with no money.、Uh, you worked for a landlord. You didn't own land. You just Help somebody else who owned the land and was inside enjoying himself for the day or herself、uh, because they had a lot of money. You were helping them grow their crops and harvest. So meanwhile, your skin was becoming very tanned, very dark, and that was considered low class. Right, and of course we did talk about the example of England with a pale skin, and now we're going to talk about Egypt. In ancient Egypt, not modern Egypt, but in ancient Egypt, you know, with the pharaohs and the pyramids, and、uh, is it Queen Cleopatra or Cleopatra, whatever? Cleopatra, yeah.、Uh, both men and women, due to the hot climate and religious beliefs, commonly shaved their heads or cut their hair short and wore wigs for hygiene and aesthetics. So here we're describing how ancient Egyptians considered appearance. Here, first of all. Uh, they shaved their heads.、Uh, that's maybe because of the hot climate. If you have a lot of hair on your head and it's very sunny,、uh, you might just want to chop that hair right on off, and you're going to be nice and cool that way. And also, you might shave off your hair for religious beliefs, which、uh, Buddhist monks and nuns do、uh, before they enter a monastery. They will shave their hair off. So that's because of religious reasons. So yes, indeed, the ancient Egyptians did that for their particular religion and for convenience. They didn't want to be too hot、uh, under a hot, sunny day there, and they did this. Well, actually, they cut their hair short or they shaved it all off, and then they wore wigs for hygiene. Wig, of course, is fake hair that you wear if you don't have a lot of your own hair. And they also did this because of aesthetics or aesthetics. That's kind of hard to say, but basically, aesthetics. Uh, that has to do with beauty,、uh, your appearance, your appearance, and also just your artistic taste. So maybe you're going to see、um, an art gallery, or going to an art gallery to see an exhibition, and you might say, "Oh, I like this artist's aesthetic or aesthetics."、Uh, if you use it in the plural noun form, you treat it as a singular noun.、Uh, there is aesthetics.、Um, You know, is quite stunning. So anyway, yeah. So that would be very important.、Uh, they thought that that looked good. It's certainly cooler.、Um, I didn't cut my hair off, Tom, but in the summer in Taiwan, I just put it up. It's in a ponytail. It's in a bun sometimes.、Uh, I want the hair off my neck. So I understand how they feel. Moreover, it says Egyptians of all social classes use something called kohl. K O H L. It's a dark color. It's a dark. Uh, it's like a dark eyeliner. That's what it is, and it's a cosmetic. It says similar to modern dark eyeliner. It was black for them, though. They didn't have different colors like we do today. They would put that around their eyes. You can see that if you look at pictures of、uh, old Egyptians, especially Cleopatra,、uh, some of the statues of her. You can see what her makeup looked like, and they would take that eyeliner and extend it to their temples. They thought that looked awesome. Your temples are right above your eyebrows,、uh, to the sides of your eyebrows.、Mm. So they really extended that dark eyeliner. Today we just kind of take it to the edge of our eyes, don't we, ladies? You might like like a cat eyeliner. You know, a cat look is popular now, but it doesn't go quite as far. To your temples is really extending it. Uh, exactly. So that's what they did in ancient Egypt. Okay, and coal here again is a cosmetic that's kind of black.、Uh, when I see the word coal here, I think of the department store in the U.S. called Coles,、uh, with a capital K there. My mother liked to go there and buy their picture frames. Uh huh. But、uh, that was a long time ago. And again, they did this、uh, painting of their eyes all the way to the temples or the sides of their heads, basically, to create 
A striking look, and if something's striking, it really catches your attention. Oh, you kind of can't look away. It's pretty amazing. Now, if someone is very good looking, you might call them striking because you can't really say they look pretty or beautiful, but they're very striking. That's a word sometimes we'll use for women who aren't exactly pretty. You know, you wouldn't say, "Oh, they're so cute or pretty," but they are. They have a look that that grabs your attention. They're striking.、Mm-hmm. Now, moving on to the next paragraph, we're going to be going to Japan,、uh, but we're going back in time. So, during Japan's Heian period, people believed that beauty involved shaving. We still shave today, don't we?、Uh, if you're a female, you might shave your legs or under your arms.、Uh, men shave their faces every single day, which is kind of hard. well. I don't. I do it about every two or three days. Oh, okay, because it's a pain. I know. Um, my dad shaved twice a day,、Ooh. and he'd shave the second time just for my mom. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? But、uh, I know, I know. But、uh, a lot of guys are growing those,、uh, you know, half beards or goatees or something. Those are very popular right、they、now.、Are. Facial hair, and I guess they did this uh, in uh, the Heian period here. Maybe、uh, basically they had to shave or pluck their eyebrows, and then they drew long oval-shaped ones higher on the forehead. So this doesn't have anything to do with beards here. No.、Uh, basically, you are shaving your eyebrows,、Crazy. which、uh, are the、uh, bits of hair above your eyes, not the eyelashes.、Uh, those are very close to your eyes, but the eyebrows are above your eyes there, and they would shave them、uh, using a sharp blade. And、uh, you could also pluck them out. Doink! You just pull it right out of your head. It could actually hurt there, but that's what they did.、Mm-hmm. And then they would draw new ones. They would draw long, oval-shaped ones higher on the forehead. Okay,、uh, I guess it's like black marks higher on your forehead, so they're farther away from your eyes. I guess they thought that that was beautiful. They thought it would bring good fortune. the The more space you had between your eyes and those eyebrows, they drew on. Wow. So additionally, they blackened their teeth. They took something and、uh, just put it on the the front of their teeth, you know, to make their teeth black,、uh, to conceal imperfections. If they had a tooth they thought was really ugly, then they would use、uh, material to blacken that tooth.、Uh, imperfection is the same as a flaw, and it's countable just as a flaw is flaw flaws imperfection imperfections. Uh, everyone has imperfections.、Uh, you can use imperfections to talk about a product too, or some sort of、uh, device has an imperfection, something that's not perfect. They also wanted to prevent bad breath and tooth decay、uh, by using this substance that they use for for blackening their teeth. So if you talk about tooth decay, it means there's some sort of bacteria that gets into our to- our tooth and starts destroying the tooth. That's why we go to the dentist, and sometimes we'll have a cavity filled. That cavity is a hole in the tooth from the decay. So, yeah, that's what they did back then before we had dentists. Right, and of course, a lot of people think that Western civilization is going to decay, and then China is going to take over the world. That's what some people think. But in any case,、uh, they blackened their teeth. They actually painted their teeth black、uh, so that you could not see. Uh, the cavities and the imperfections. Nowadays, people actually want to whiten their teeth、uh, using special products that you can buy.、Uh-huh. I think some people say you can take a banana skin or something and rub it on your teeth、oh. to make them、uh, whiter. I don't, I don't know. know.、Uh, I could I could try that. I suppose my teeth are not particularly white, even though I brush my teeth every day. But in any case, that's what they did in Japan during the Heian period. And here in the final paragraph, it says over the years. The standards of beauty have undergone significant transformations. A transformation is just a big change, and as you might expect, as you might expect,、uh, trends come and go. What is considered beautiful,、uh, like、uh, in one particular time, ten years later, it's considered ugly. True. A transfer. A transformation is one of our vocab words. It just means to change something completely from one form to another. So maybe you、uh, have a friend that you knew in junior high or high school, and then you run into them twenty years later, and they look completely different. They've had a transformation. Or maybe you're going to remodel your a home or your apartment. It can undergo a transformation and look completely different. So features like eyes, noses, mouths, even parts of our bodies like our stomachs, 
fat stomachs used to be very attractive long ago、uh, during the Renaissance period in Europe. They they loved women with these fat tummies.、Uh, that's different now.、Uh, these features were considered attractive in a- attractive in ancient times. But maybe today they don't align or conform or match up with today's ideals. What people think are really beautiful now, what was once seen as beautiful now tends to seem strange. This always happens with trends and fashion too. Right, and it would be very useful for all of you to discuss this topic amongst yourselves. What are some beauty standards that we have now that we did not have in the past? I think the、uh, beauty standard now of having skinny women、uh, is pretty widespread, but I think they look kind of sick if they're too skinny. But that, of course, is my personal opinion. And when we come back next time, we will actually start talking in depth about this concept of appearance anxiety. Make sure you join us then. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. 而我们从英国跑到古埃及第三段，古埃及的这个古啊，如果你用 o 的就不太 o 的了。所以第三段第一句的古埃及的古，那是远古，要用 ancient ancient 这个形容词。好，古埃及怎样呢？古埃及当时啊，哦，原来是因为地理环境的原因，气候炎热，还有他们的宗教信仰，对不对？他们觉得美是怎样呢？第一，头发剃光，或者是要剪短发，然后呢，要戴上假发，这样才能够保持卫生。跟美观，哎，这个跟我们看到一些电影啊，大概就可以想象出那个样子，有没有头发的样子？好，这个第一句呢，我们先不要放过。第一句特别注意一下最后面的“保持卫生跟美观”这两件事。所谓的卫生，就是如果我们没有学过这个词，大概就会用 “clean”， 对不对？好像很干净，没有哦。英文当中的卫生有个概念性的词，就叫做 “hygiene”。hygiene 这个这个卫生。就不只是很单纯什么什么所谓干净的意思，那包含有什么叫做干净啦，如何维持安这个维护安这个干净啊等等啊，这样子的所谓的卫生概念就叫做 hygiene hygiene。还有最后一个字美观，美观不能只用 beauty 这个字哦，不是只有美，这个美观的概念就更广更深了。所以英文也有这个字，我们把它学起来，特别注意它的发音哦 ，aesthetic。Aesthetics. 那如果不加 s， 它就有形容词的意思。加 s 的话呢，它就指的是美观这个概念。Aesthetics. Aesthetics. 好，那那个古埃及人呢，我们都知道他的眼睛外面都涂黑黑的，对不对？我们特别把“涂”这个动词抓出来。同样在第三段第二句，第二句有一个 apply 的用过去式，对不对？ Apply 这个字，我们看到它就会想到申请奖学金、申请什么东西。Apply for a college, apply for the scholarship。但其实 apply 后面加上介系词的 to 的时候，就会有应用于什么什么的意思。那终归如何呢？都是回归到这个动词 apply 本来就有涂抹的意思。所以当我们去申请啊或应用啊，有那种往外延伸的概念，有没有？这个 apply 就是涂啊，涂药膏啊，涂眼影等等。好，那接下来我们第四段看到的是日本哦。日本在平安时代，他们会觉得美是什么呢？第一，眉毛要剃掉或拔掉。然后呢，他们会觉得眼睛跟眉毛之间的距离越大越有福气耶。好，我们在今天的文章当中，最重要的就是这一个句型了。什么句型呢？我们通常会说是 the more the more 的句型。当然，这个 more 是更多啦。其实只要两种人事物会有同样的正比或者是反比的关系，在英文就可以用这个句型 ：the 加上比较级逗点 ，the 加上比较级。那这个比较级之后就直接加主词跟动词就好，而且用逗点哦，也不用用连接词。所以我们可以说：哎，你如果车开得越快的话，就会越快达到终点啊。The faster you drive， 逗点。The sooner you arrive. 所以回归到文章，我们看到的是 the larger 空间越大，每一根眼的空间越大。逗点 the more good fortune 就越有福气耶。所以，我们今天带大家看一下，在过去历史当中美的定义。明天我们就要进入到容貌焦虑喽。我是安娜，我们明天见。
That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Make sure you join us again next time when we continue to talk about appearance anxiety. And also remember, also remember to check out our content on YouTube and Facebook. You might find it useful. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.